guys and gals, and every here from Drakewing Game, and some of you may on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon today. I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Kimia. So y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. All right. According to an Astron Code 3304 under housing, Magistrate Anthony was fully within his rights to do so without notifying you, Amicus. Then when the... Then where the hell have you been living, Neferu? The jackal opens his mouth, but is interrupted by Calm once again. He has been renting various temporary living spaces, mainly within the Silk and Clay districts. I have logged the addresses of each location if you would like to... Shut the hell up for once, Calm. The point has been made. If all you do is spy, then you should learn to read a room. Read a room does not compute, Neferu. We know, Calm. Neferu, why did you not tell me? Why did you not tell me of this? Amicus looks less angry now, more confused. Nefru sighs. You are the Emperor of Adastra. You have bigger issues to worry about than of me getting kicked out of apartments because of Wolf and Spite. Not if it endangers your life. If the Pharaoh, even the Vizier, knew, knew, of your, knew of your slinking around the worst di districts of Adastra, our entire efforts of the past four years could be ended within seconds. Why are you so sure of that? You seem to think they care about me. I said none of your games tonight. I know your relationship with your father is a poor one, but frankly, that matters little to me. What does matter is the optics. Imagine, the son of the Kimian Pharaoh being murdered on the poorest streets of that Astra. Imagine it! Like it or not, you were my responsibility while you were here, as you are a diplomatic guest. So, my inability to, at the very least, keep you alive would demand an answer from Kimi and set back all of our work by years, if not generations! That finally seems to get through to the Jackal, and he does not respond this time. A very uncomfortable silence follows. And the jackal bows with a quick duck of his head. You are right, Amicus. I suppose I have become too comfortable on this moon. I apologize for my negligence. Nefru then turns to me. And I apologize to you, Scipio. I had no intention of endangering your mission, but more importantly, your life. Forgive me. He catches me a bit off guard, but I manage to keep my composure. You have my forgiveness, Nefru. Then, realizing Amicus's eyes are now on me, I quickly turn to him. I am adjusting and learning about this new position I am, I am in. Still, I should have known such actions were reckless. I'm sorry, my emperor. I kneel before Amicus, holding my breath. This would be the most. This would be the moment. This would be the moment to prepare myself for a dismissal from both the palace and my position. Nefru's paw comes to rest on my shoulder in a somewhat sympathetic way. Amicus rubs his face with the paw tiredly, sighing loudly. Be thankful that Virginia is not aware of this. Amicus, you should know that a report of the incident has been filed for Virginia upon her awakening. Delete that, Calm. Deleting report on the assassination attempt upon the lives of Nefru and Scipio for Virginia. Gods. I have such a mess to clean up now. Who else knows of what happened? The owner of the establishment and possibly a few housekeepers. Come, guard the entrance to the den. Ensure that no one leaves the premises until I arrive. Amicus walks past us and I can hear the deep rumble in his throat that is a stifled growl before he calls over his shoulder. Nefru, you are to take up residence in the palace once more. I'll have your belongings moved here from wherever the hell you're staying now. Oh, wonderful. In fact, come, alert Viteris and Brunus that they will both be moving re moving residents behind palace walls first thing in the morning. We cannot afford mistakes at this point. Yes, Amicus. And where shall I bed for the night, Amicus? Amicus is almost past the archway. Same room as last time. It should be as you left it. Oh, really? I thought that room was for the Emperor. But Amicus disappears around the corner, a small parade of drones following him. Nefru goes quiet, staring at the archway where the wolf last was. Then he rubs the back of his neck, looking back at me. Does this mean I take the sofa? I gesture at one of them. I'm only partly joking. I'm not sure where I'm supposed to stay. If you'd like, I don't think I have ever seen anyone use them. I believe, however, that Amicus was implying that we share the room. What made you believe that? There are two beds in that room, if it really is the same as I left it. I see. I think about my small room on campus, the one that I had been moved, moved to after achieving my new assignment. The place that I desperately wish to be right now. Being in, the, being in the faculty dorms, they don't have to mingle with students. Not that I would have to anyway, considering they're all off for the summer. Thank you, Neil. Water time. Well, I'd like to be alone. I'm not so sure if there's a security robust enough, if there's security enough, robust enough to deal with the assassination attempts. I don't know if Amicus is a drone tailing me as well. Probably not. So, do you wish to speak about what happened, or... In all honesty, I, I wish to have a genuine bath. I'm becoming aware of the smell again, now that I'm no longer distracted by the Emperor. I'll take that as a no. Follow me. 
I frown a bit as I follow the jackal, reminding myself of Kimmy and bluntness and my need to adjust to it, or even adapt to it for my own use. We walk in silence through the marble halls, and soon cross into sections I'm not familiar with. The last time I visited the palace, I've been a bit too preoccupied to really take in my surroundings. Now I'm, now I'm able to see that it's more simple than I would have imagined, almost utilitarian in its design. One would imagine halls lined with gold and encrusted with gems if they only listened to rumors spread by the lower classes. We come to a stop at what appears to be a door without a handle, and Nefru automatically raises a paw to a black square, which sends the door sliding open at a startling speed. That is a bit fanciful, I have to admit. What's even more fanciful is a bath the same size as the public one at the university, maybe even bigger. The university's bath is almost always filled with dozens of men, but this one is completely empty. Instead of the sulfuric smell I'm used to, I'm instead hit with a warm, steamy wall of floral scents. Help yourself. The drones will clean up after you. I step in hesitantly, then notice Nefru hanging back. Don't you need to wash as well? There's a personal bath in the room. Besides that, I feel you need to, I feel you need a more... Nefru makes vague, waving motions with his paws. A wide open space to ease your mind. What you experienced was a terrible thing, and I know it has affected you. I bristle. For that moment, yes, but I've had time to collect myself. Well, collect yourself further. When you're finished, ask for directions to where I am. Cobb will direct you. Nefru steps out, leaving me frowning once again at the way he seems to sprint circles around me with his blunt words. I begin undressing, deciding to be faster with my own tongue when I speak to him. Nefru thinks himself to be more clever than he really is, but it's not difficult to speak fast while being rude. Not for me, anyway. I simply yield to higher, I simply yield to higher authority, and being a mentee student, well, that means I yield to almost everyone here. Nefru, however, insists we speak as equals, and if most of my assignment involves needing to learn more about him, then I must do that. I suck air through my teeth as I slip into the water, a bit surprised at how much hotter it is in the university bath. I usually lower myself slowly, but it's painful enough It's painful enough that as my groin nears the steaming water, I just drop in all at once. <sighs> I groan in equal parts pain and pleasure before dunking my head into the scented water. I come back up, tasting the salty minerals, leaving me to wonder how they've been kept this, how they've kept the smell so pleasant. Maybe it's completely artificial. I don't mind either way. I'm already feeling better, shivering down my spine a few times as I imagine the remnants of the night wash off down my body. I submerge myself a few more times before finally settling back, sighing deeply. I'm finally able to relax. And though the hot water is partially the culprit, it's mainly due to the fact that I haven't been dismissed yet. Amicus would have done it in the main hall if he'd felt that was that was what he'd done. If he felt that what he'd done was too egregious. And for the moment, Nefru hasn't shown any indication that he intends to tell anyone else about what he saw me do. Though I had just been reluctant to share my experience with the Jackal, I now think it would be wise to open up to him a bit. He'd seen my reaction and questioned it. And best to achieve some understanding, just in case he goes elsewhere for answers. During the psychological portion of the vetting process for my position, I'd almost panicked many times. I doubt I'd be able to do it again in my current state. Then maybe you aren't meant to be the one to go. It'll be difficult confessing my mental weakness to someone that isn't my that isn't my mindfulness teacher or my mother. My eyes fly open as I realize I've forgotten to send my daily message to her. Damn it, calm! Yes, Scipio. Second y'all, water time. Do you have a portal here that I can use? I'm sorry, but I cannot allow you to use technology reserved for the Imperial family. I sigh, wondering if I'll have to ask Nefru to borrow his. However, your personal portal is due to arrive within the minute, along with the rest of your belongings. Would you like me to send it to you in the baths? Er, yes, please. I'm not sure how to feel about my personal things being gathered and flown to me without me being involved. I don't dwell on it. Standing to, standing to soap and then rinse my fur, I'm careful to really get the spots that were on there at one point crusted up. I dry in a, I dry in a hurry. As I'm dressing, a tiny drone floats down from, the, from an opening in the ceiling. Balancing the silver rod about the length of my forearm upon its back, I pluck my portal from the floating machine in a delicate manner, now very conscious of what they're capable of. Thank you. I mumble quietly, but it immediately floats away, back to its ceiling hatch. I quickly tap to extend the transport, tran to extend the transparent glowing panel from the rod. I feel my heart leap in my chest, and I, I see that I have a message waiting for me to, for me from my mother. I hope that maybe she hadn't been up yet, even though Lux is several hours ahead of it, Astra. She's an early riser. I open it and see the small message. Skip, I hope you are well. Did you fall asleep early? I imagine they must be working quite hard. Please respond when you can. All my love, Mother. I was, was sent around the time I'd been asleep before it happened. What if I hadn't survived and never sent her a final message because of my forgetfulness? 
I start to type a message back, a quick one. But then I notice the icon in the corner. Visual communication is what truly makes this device a portal. We only use it once we we'll only use it once weekly, but that day is two days away. And because I missed sending my message one t uh, on time, and because I missed my mother, I pushed the icon resembling an arrowhead, as if pointing in the direction of where my mother is, thousands of miles away. He answers within seconds, and at first all I see is white fabric, then a bracelet in my mother's face. Ugh, sorry for all the yawning, y'all. Skip, are you alright? You fell asleep, didn't you? She doesn't, she doesn't sound too worried or upset, but here... Her chiding voice makes it difficult to speak for some reason. Scipio, you are alright, aren't you? Have you just had a bath? Your mane is sticking up. The fortress inside my mind that I that, that I had thought had rebuilt comes crumbling down. I open my mouth, but all that comes out is a sob as the tears well over. When I get back to Nefru's room, I find him already asleep on the bed. It's certainly much more exotic than the rest of the palace, but being the Emperor's room, that makes sense. I see a few crates stacked in one corner of the room, which I presume to be our belongings. I'm too tired to look into them now, however, I find, I find myself slumping into the smaller bed. Even if it is smaller, it's quite a bit more comfortable than any bed I've slept in. Within less than a minute, the gurgling fountain beside, behind me lulls me into a deep sleep. I sit on the edge of the pond, letting my feet cool in the water. I was only a little confused when I woke up in the palace. I very quickly remember what happened the night before. It's somewhat easier to think back on now. Still, there's an odd, dreamy quality to what I see, almost like a filter exists between me and the world. It's a familiar, numbing feeling, and I sit there in front of the fountain, feeling as if I'm staring through a fog I cannot see. This happened last time, too, though it's not nearly as bad. Shortly after the riots, I was seeing everything as if it were a film. A terrible, depressing film, but at least it didn't feel real. A defense mechanism my mindfulness teacher had called it. I'd, let ne I'd left Nefru still sleeping in the bedroom, hopeful that he might seek me out, and extremely relieved when he does. Nefru, come, Nefru, Nefru coming to look for me tells me that he's at least still interested in me, which I remind myself is something I need to keep up. He stumbles out, looking a bit more unkempt than usual, squinting in the bright light. Getting fresh air? I just need to... I wave my paws around, mimicking him from last night. Second note. Okay. Alrighty. A space. If space is what you like, I think you will really enjoy the deserts of Kimia. You know, I come from a region of Adastra that is, you know, I come from a region of Adastra that is a desert. Yes, but nowhere on Adastra is like the deserts of Kimia. Yeah, lots of dunes, right? Among other things, but yes, many of those. Think back to my primary schooling. I would go to the library and obsessively examine the educational murals of Kimia, and the sprawling dunes below and a bright moon above. Meanwhile, jackals danced in the moonlight. That's probably the beginning of my obsession with Kimia, and Nefru reminding me that I might that I might be able to go. It penetrates through my numbed fog, and I feel some excitement, but also apprehension, because I know I need to talk to Nefru about last night if I'm ever going to rest easy. It must show on my face. What's wrong? Can I speak to you for a moment? About something I'd like to keep private between us. Nefru walks closer to the edge of the pond. Well, it depends on what that something is. Promising to keep a secret before knowing it is... Ah, I jumped. I jumped too, bringing my paws to my chest and ducking my head. What? I look back at the jackal as he stumbles back, staring with wide eyes at the ground beside me. I look down, finding nothing but stone, but stone and a garden spider. I look back up at him, my heart hammering a bit, to bits in my chest, trying to fight off that rising panic. What is it, Neferu? Is he play? If he's playing games with me in my current state, I don't think I would be able to forgive him. But now he's shuddering, looking angry. Oh God, damn your eight eyes! It's every time in this awful garden. Look at the spider, motionless, legs fanned out to, the, out to touch either side of the pond stone border. Are you? Are you speaking to a spider, Nefru? And how the hell do you sit next to it? It's disgusting! Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. I mean, it is a giant. And Astra has enormous fucking spiders. So, I mean, he's probably used to giant scorpions. But anyway, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. We're going to be getting some wonderfully animated new little uh, coin icons from L, doing some great work with animation. Anyway, y'all, I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye!